how's it going? So today I'd like to go over a little pole basic move with you, which is called the fan kick. And it looks just like this. So in this video, I want to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to perform this move. You can either do this move with heels on or without heels, but I really encourage you to try it without them first, just to get the whole movement right, because heels are additional weight on your feet and that way it's just going to make it all a little bit more difficult. However, if you've mastered it already, feel free to just put them on and follow along. We're going to start by taking this move to the ground actually, just to practice what the legs are doing. Then we're going to take it on the pole and then we're also going to have a look at how to enter and exit this move, just so it doesn't look too cut off, but a little bit more flowy, just so you'll be able to use it in your little routines. And then I'm also going to show some little progressions like things that you can build in just to build up a little bit more strength or also to make it look prettier to act a little bit differently and also just some other grips to try out for you let's get into it so we're taking it to the ground first so when we're down on the ground we actually have two options already we can either take it on the ground on the pole or we can do it without the pole which i will show first now just because if you don't have a pole at home you can actually practice it a little bit at home as well for this first option we're gonna lean back on our arms or we can also lean back on our elbows whatever you feel comfortable with i'm gonna go for the arms first so we're just leaning back on our arms bending the knees here now if we imagine our pole to be on this side here where my arm is so where the pole actually is here we're gonna drop our legs to the other side so just like that and now we're gonna take the inside leg so the one that is on top right now and we can extend it and bring it all the way across our body here. So we're gonna bring it all the way across and we're gonna draw a big circle in front of our face and bring it over. Let's do that once more. So extending the leg and bringing it all the way over to the other side. You can already feel that the other leg is lifting off here. And what we wanna do now is let the other leg follow. So extending out bringing it over i'm really pressing this leg into me and as we're getting to this part here we want to extend the other leg as well and it wants to follow in a big circle as well the first leg can bend and the other one comes over and bends as well so we're on the other side here let's do it once more so i'm gonna extend my leg bringing it all the way over here my leg is internally rotated so my knee is coming towards the ground here and then I'm bringing it as close to my upper body as I can and as it passes around here I'm actually externally rotating the leg just to make it look towards the ground again so here it's rotated to this side and then I'm externally rotated so I'm rotating it back from my body rather than towards my body and bringing it down to get that nice straddle shape. As we are here, the other leg will actually join in. And this one here is externally rotated at first. And then as I'm bringing it inside, it internally rotates. You can bend the bottom leg and bring the other leg on top. And bring it back in. So let's do this one a little bit quicker. Bring the legs to the side, extending the one leg, bringing it over and the other one over until we're back in and sit. And from here, we can basically reverse the whole thing. So we're extending the leg again and bringing it over. Same thing. And back over. Alrighty. If you want, you can also take it down to your elbows. This will make it easier to actually bring the legs closer to your body. So maybe just give this one a go. It might feel a little bit weird in the beginning. But yeah, let's try that. So I'm extending this leg bringing it all the way over, across, and over again, and all the way back. So make sure to not hit anything. And that's basically what our legs are doing. So we want to do like the big circle around here, and also make sure to not start the circle here. So we don't want to be starting halfway through, we actually want to take it all the way across at first and then take it over, drawing that circle, bringing the other leg out as well to join and bring it all the way across again. And here you can basically feel how this leg, because it's internally rotating towards the end, 
how it wants to like shift your body over. So just remember that because we're going to feel that on the pole as well. So you can also do all of this on the pole. It's the exact same thing. So we're just going to hold here in a strong hold grip. So we have the outside hand on top, inside hand on the bottom. And now we're letting our legs bend to the side. And then again, the inside leg comes up and the other leg follows and you can feel this rotation that starts because my leg is internally rotating here towards the end so let's do this one once more so bring them over to one side and then all the way over the other leg comes up here it's externally rotated as i'm bringing it in it's internally rotating what makes my hips want to come in here and up over and I can also just get up easily like that or come over to the other side and try out the other side for this one so this time we're going to let the legs drop to the other side we're going to extend and bringing it all the way over you might already feel it a little bit here but your torso wants to go down a little bit so we want to keep our arms nice and strong here the whole time so really squeezing your elbow in here to not lose the armpit grip but also really trying to rip the pole out of the ceiling so really not losing that grip here and that we keep that arm engagement going but yeah we can also go back a little bit just to allow those legs to come a little bit closer to us as well and to just support this whole movement so bringing it from here extending and over So just give this one a go and then we take it up to the pole and check out how all of this works when we're standing up. So take it up to the pole. As always, we want to make sure that our shoulders are nice and engaged. So we want to take them back and down and also keep our lats engaged throughout this whole thing. We're going to come into a strong hold grip. So we're going to take the pole into our armpit here and then we can just squeeze it in here to keep the pole there. So we're squeezing that elbow towards our body and then placing the outside arm on top or the outside hand on top and we really don't want to be losing this grip here we want to keep everything nice and engaged here the whole time because as soon as we are uh, softening our arms we're actually just going to end up down here and it's going to make it way harder to bring our legs up again so getting into the current position here is very important so for now you can also bring your hips in front of the pole here just so the pole can take a little bit of that weight and now we're going to do the same thing as on the floor so we're going to bring our inside leg the leg that is inside the pole we're going to bring it across and all the way in a big circle over and then as we're going over the other leg joins in as well so let's have a look at that to make this a little bit easier we can step back first and then come forwards bring our hips forwards here bring the leg over and come all the way over and now here you can feel this uh, rotation going again that i was mentioning before on the floor and this rotation will actually help you now to get your body off the floor so you want to loosen the arm grip towards the end here and just push yourself off the pole a little bit just to be able to get out of this move nicely and not end up just like this and trying to come out of it in a not so nice way let's have a look at this once more so i'm starting in my stronghold grip here i've got the pole in my armpit shoulders nice and engaged i'm going to bring this leg across if you feel okay doing it from this position here go ahead if you feel like it feels weird bringing it over like that because you don't really get into that weird position just take a step back here and then bring it forward and as you're bringing the hips over you're already bringing the leg over as well and then we're going to take it all the way over and around make sure to keep your legs extended to really engage the quads to keep the legs extended and we also want to have pointed feet we don't want to be doing this it does not look so pretty unless you think it's pretty then have fun do it like that that's up to you so as we did on the floor we want to make sure that that leg that starts the whole movement is internally rotated at first so just like this and when it comes over it actually externally rotates to allow that nice straddle position and then the leg that comes over starts internally rotating as it comes over to join the other leg so let's have a look at that one once more so inside leg internally rotated here 
we're gonna come over, hold it here, externally rotated both legs, and now the other leg internally rotates, and this helps us to come off the pole as well in the air. Because as you can see, when I internally rotate my leg, it's not just the leg doing that, but it's actually trying to move my hips as well, rotate my hips and revert the whole rest of my body. So I'm just gonna allow that rotation to be able to get off the pole in a nice way. So if this just seems really, really hard to do because you can't really get your legs up like that, that's totally okay. Just try to keep your legs a little bit lower first and work your way up. The more you practice, the better it will get. So you can just bring it over and just hold them down here. So just bring them as high up as you can, but try to keep them straight and toes pointed as well. So three little things to pay attention to with the fan kick is that we really want to make a big circle. So we're bringing our leg across and drawing a big circle here, as big as we can, but we're really starting the movement away from the pole and bringing it all the way over. We don't want to start it away from the pole to the front. We want to bring it to the side across our body and not here. Because if we're going to do this, it's just going to bring our body forwards and we're really going to be struggling to keep that engagement going here because we're going in two opposite directions and that way it's not really going to look the way we want it to look. So even if we take momentum now, it would probably just look like this. So we don't get the full fan kick going, but it's just like a very small one and kind of not even bringing us around the pole because we're still stuck back here. Whereas our legs are trying to go somewhere and yeah, it's just an awkward position. So the second thing is that we want to tuck our pelvis in when we're lifting our legs up. So try to really not stand like this, but tucking our pelvis in to be able to engage the lower abs to be able to properly lift up your legs because it's going to be easier to lift your legs like this than if you would be standing like that. Like I can't really get them up that high. So I really want to tuck my pelvis in here and use those lower abs to be able to bring my legs around. And then the third thing to pay attention to is when we're taking it into that fan kick, try to lift yourself up a little bit higher here and you can even make your body go to the back slightly just to be able to bring the legs even higher up. So I'll show you that one from the side. So we go from here and over. So that was like that mini up and just slightly back. Like we don't want to go into a full invert where we're extending our arms, but we want to keep the engagement going and just do a little bit of this motion here just to be able to really get those legs higher up. I'll do that once more. So I hope you could see how my body moved a little bit to the back. So if you feel comfortable with all of this and you paid attention to all those little things, I just want to show you a way to just get into it a little bit nicer because when you're doing a nice routine and you're just doing something, it just looks really silly when you're suddenly doing this. And then kind of like what we were doing so far, that was just to get you started, to take a little bit of weight off, to make it a little bit easier. But now we actually want to see how to do all of this without having to bring our hips here which just looks really mechanical and not really flowy and yeah it's just hard to incorporate a move like that unless you come out somewhere around here when you're doing a routine that's totally fine there um but yeah usually we do a fan kick out of walking or whatever so let's just have a look at that let's just pretend we want to get into it from a pole walk so we're just going to be walking here one two three and then when we step onto the outside leg this is when it gets interesting we want to make our arm slide down a little just so we'll be able to get into that strong foot grip after but we're not going to come straight in like that we just want to do that at the same time as we're bringing the leg forward just to make it look more natural so as i'm bringing the inside leg across again just like this i'm placing the pole into my armpit here and putting the other hand onto the pole and then i can keep going from here so we've been walking here outside leg so the head slides down and now as we bring in the inside leg forward we're bringing it into the armpit here making some room for the second hand and we bring it all the way over as you could see i did not bring my hips over here anymore because eventually we don't want to rely on the pole here to hold our weight but we want to be able to hold ourselves up with our arms this is going to make it 
a little bit more challenging, but it's also going to make it look nicer because yeah, we're not clinging onto the pole so much. But what did happen now, because I'm not just holding with my arms and my armpit here, I actually do have a point of contact here as well, about where my ribs are. So just about here, I actually do have that little point of contact and having the point of contact up here instead of somewhere at the hip allows me also to bring my hip even higher up and that way I can bring my legs closer to myself and make the whole move look even bigger. So I'm going to show this from the side just so you can see that the pole actually ends up somewhere around here. So again, I'm going to be doing all the things. So outside leg, hand will slide down and I'm going to push myself into the pole as I bring the leg forward. Let's do this. From a pole walk, I'm going to come into the fan kick here. And I did a little pull there again and just having it at the ribs, it just helped me to lift the weight a little bit to drop my upper body a little bit down. And yeah, so just give this entry a little go, practice around with it a bit until it becomes more fluid. And for the exit, we've already been doing it the whole time. We're just gonna keep going with the rotation of the legs. So my leg in the end internally rotates as we come in here. And I'm just gonna allow that rotation to happen, to come over, push up the pole slightly, just to get into like a nice stand here, or just continue with whatever else you wanna do. So let's just have a look at both of these together. So we've been doing a little pole walk here, and as the outside leg comes in, we're gonna come into a fan kick and let that rotation happen. Push a little bit with our arms if we need to, just to get a little bit of distance in between us and the pole, and we can keep going from here. You can do a pirouette straight after, you can come into another little spin here, whatever you like to do. So just to make all of this look a little bit more fluid, rather than just hopping out of the fan kick just like this and be like, okay, cool, what's next? Maybe I'm just going to push myself off and do something, but just to make all of this look a little bit more fluid. Okay, now if you nailed all of this so far and this is really easy for you, I have some progressions for you to try out, like either to strengthen yourself a little bit or to just play around with this move a little bit more. So the first thing I'm going to show you is a little isometric hold that we're going to do. So instead of just doing a fan kick, we're actually going to hold the straddle position from the fan kick. So we're going to start off. You can use the pretty entry or you can just use it like that, depending on if you're just doing it for strengthening or if you actually want to make it part of a routine or something. So we're going to come in and just hold it here and then bring it back over. You can start holding it for three seconds or upgrade to five seconds. And of course, do all of this the other way around as well. So bringing it up and all the way over. This is also a really good way to just check if your straddle is nice, if your legs are externally rotated, and yeah, just to do a little check on form while you're holding this position. Maybe film yourself as well, just to check out if it all looks good. Another little thing that you can do, just to condition this move a little bit more, is to reverse the whole thing. So we're gonna get into the fan kick and then take it straight back again. So let's do a little bit prettier entry this time. So something into it and back out of it. And of course, you can repeat all of this on the other side again. A step, arm down, bringing it all over and back in. So of course, we can add other things onto this little move. So we can, for example, pull ourselves up before we keep going and then end this whole fan kick, not on the ground, but in a pole sit. Just a little advice, it's way easier if you have bare skin here <laughs> on your thighs, just to be able to hold that pole sit with your thighs and not just with your arms. I'm just quickly going to show it to you just like that. So we're having our hands slightly higher up and we're going to pull ourselves up into it. And at the same time, we're bringing the inside leg through. So I'm stepping with my outside leg, bring the other leg on top, and then we can sit down here. Ooh, should have rotated the other way. And just hold it there. So of course, you can sit down like this like this, whatever you like to do. So I'll show it once more and then I just explain a little bit about the ending there. So I guess the pull up is pretty normal. We do all the same things. The only add-on that comes in is that we are pulling up. So we're gripping up a little bit higher and you can also get yeah, reach for that arm as you bring the inside leg across. 
So coming in, reach, and I'm leaning back more than before here. And yeah, as you could see, for the ending, I was bringing this leg to the back so I can bring it onto the other side of the pole because before we would always end up with both legs on the same side of the pole. But this time I'm bringing the first leg to the back and around to be able to catch the pole there. So when the second leg joins, I have the pole in between me. So basically what our leg is doing, the first bit is a circle and we're gonna do like a big eight. So this is the first part of the eight and then we're bringing our leg to the back and across and all the way in, in order to be able to catch that pole. So I'm just showing it from the side. So firstly my pancake, and then from here, I'm gonna bring it across to the back, crossing my body here again, just opposite to what we did before, and then bringing it all the way around and back in. And by the time the second leg joined, we caught the pole in between. I'll show it once more and try to slow that part down a little. So up and now to the back and around. And the other leg just joins, pulling myself up here. And now bringing this one to the back and around. As you see, I don't have to go hips to the back, but I'm really trying to engage that glute just to bring the leg slightly towards the back to be able to catch that pole because the pole is not so thick so it's just this little tiny bit that we need to bring the leg around and then catch the pole there so the last little thing that i wanted to show you is that we can use different grips for the pancake as well so so far we've been using the strong hold grip here with the same one that we used for the invert only in the beginning we've used the hips later we just took it up to the ribs here just to be able to perform the move a little bit nicer so now we're going to have a look at the forearm grip so I also posted a video with the forearm grip plan, so maybe you know this grip already from there. But what we essentially want to be doing, we want to place our hand onto the pole and we're going to have our forearm going across, just so we're really able to hold it here. And the other arm just goes on top. And the other arm wants to be straight and pulling down here. And then we can take it from here. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. Our outside leg will step, the inside leg will come across and into that pancake. So let's just have a look at that. Outside leg step and around. And towards the end, as you can see, you're going to lose that grip here. So I went from having it across here, really pushing into that pole, just to be able to hold it up here, to actually let go a bit slightly and just having it next to the pole towards the end of that loop. Show it once more from this side, and then I'll try to show it out of a different angle. So we're in that forearm grip hold here, outside leg steps, and we go over. So I'm really pushing in here, pulling with that top arm, outside leg steps, and taking it over. And this arm here, I'm not pushing against it anymore, it's rather next to it, because before, I had the elbow properly across and now it's next to it and yeah, I'm just holding on to it. There's no pressure on that arm anymore. Alright, once more from the back. Forearm grip here. I'm really pushing against the pole here to keep my upper body away and to give me that little bit of a lift that I need for this move. Outside leg steps, lifting. And now as I'm coming here, this arm I can actually take it off already because I don't really need it. So the grip here loosens and just because my body position changed and like the angle of my arm to my body changed that's why it's simply not there anymore so just let it naturally come off and you'll be fine so the last little grip that i wanted to show you is the split grip maybe you know it from certain conditioning exercises or you just have to hold it like this bring your legs up and down whatever and um, also from your butterfly position and that you might not really know that one, or if you're into Aisha's and handsprings and all that, like this is just something that we do really often, the split grip here. Usually you have the pole in front of you for it. This time, because we don't wanna be jumping into the pole, we wanna come around the pole, we actually have to position ourselves a little bit next to it. So the pole is next to me rather than in front of me. And here as well, we're gonna be pushing with the bottom leg and pulling with the top leg. 
And in order to have space to come through here, we want to have the top arm a little bit more bent than usually. And we also don't want to have it too high because I just will have trouble to get through here. So I'm just trying to keep it here at a comfortable position. Also the bottom arm, don't overextend it, but just keep it slightly bent here. And we're pushing and pulling here. And we're doing all the same things with the legs again. So we're going to step with the outside leg, bring our inside leg over and come through. So let's do this. And over to the other side. And then of course we can do all of this on the other side as well. So I'm pushing here, pulling with the top leg, try to not have it too high up, but to find a good position where you feel safe. And we're not overextending the bottom arm. And then we're gonna step with the outside leg first, bring the inside leg across and all the way over as we did all the time before. So across and over. I'm not sure if you could see it on the video there, but as I was doing this, I did actually not touch the pole with my body just because I had like a pretty strong grip here with my arms and had the arms nice and engaged and I could just hold that position. But you can also try to get into your hip pocket here just to be able to get a little bit of extra support as you're doing this. So let me just show you once more from the front, bringing it into the hip pocket. So I have my split grip prepaid here, outside leg comes in and now here I can bring the pole right into that hip crease. So between my upper thigh and yeah, my hip, like right in there. And that way we can just support ourselves a little bit on the pole and it's not so hard. Okay, let me show you that one. Stepping with the outside leg, bringing the other leg on top and then coming all the way over. But yeah, if you feel like you don't need it, that's totally fine as well. Maybe you should be able to see from this side here. Stepping with my outside leg, coming over and I hope you saw it this time, I did not touch the pole with my body. So just like that, <laughs> just trying to get that angle right. I hope you can see that somewhere there. So there's options, either bring your hip crease onto it or push yourself off the pole and just continue the movement without even touching the pole. You have those two options there. And with those two grips, always remember as well, same as with the other ones, we're coming across and over for our pancake. We are not gonna take it forward and then just lose everything as we're going into the wrong direction. We just wanna take it to the side and over. So that is all that I had for you today. If you're keen on just incorporating this pancake into a little choreo, feel free to try this pole flow combination video that I've done here as well. It's a step-by-step -step tutorial and yeah, I hope that you could get something out of this video and if you have any questions just ask me down below as always and happy training. See ya!